Cool temperatures, 53 and overcast in Statesboro. Not expecting any rain, however. Now Nevada won the coin toss, but elected to defer. So Georgia Southern will get the football first. Kevin McKelvey about to kick to Carl Miller, who stands at the five. The title game is underway. Miller will take it from the seven. Look out, Carl Miller across the 40. In the Nevada territory and down at the 44. Brock Marion on the tackle. We told you it's going to be wide open, folks. Look at the blocking up front. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's out of their lanes. They've got a lead blocker, and he takes it back. Now, he does a wise thing here by letting his blockers catch up with him, jump out in front and try to get something, but that allows the pursuit to come up and catch him from behind. Boy, how about that to start things off? Mm. And Miller stays in on a wing to the right. On first down, an inside handoff to the fullback, Joe Ross, and a gain of about four. Now, Raymond Gross is the trigger man for Georgia Southern. Excellent quarterback. You just saw Ross on the carry. The two slot backs are Hopkins and Carl Miller, who ran the kickoff back to the 44. The receivers, Belser and Terrence Sorrell. They do not have a tight end. All those outside guys, wide blockers. Gross keeps. And gets maybe a yard. Matt Clafton, the middle linebacker for Nevada, made the tackle. How do you like this offensive line, Tim? Well, it's been totally rebuilt from last year. Last, uh, they lost four of the five guys. Wilson's the only returner. Parrish in the middle. Wilson and Ayub go outside of him. And Nottage and Smith are the tackles. But Wilson's the only returner. Ayub, perhaps the hardest worker, most talented of them all, could be Nottage. Third and seven from the 40-yard line of the Wolfpack. Gross throwing for the first time. No, he pump fakes and keeps it and gets the first down. A 10-yard gain after a very emphatic pump fake. You know, I think Gross had all intentions of throwing this sprint out. He looks down right now and sees Belser, goes to throw, but sees the man coverage close down on it. Now, they know because of the activity of the Nevada defense, as aggressive as it is, they can cut back and find creases, and that's what he did for the first. First down from the 30. Slot formation to the right. Option left. Gross. Another 10-yard gain. I believe it's another first at the 20-yard line. Defensive front for Nevada, D.O. Ship and Neil Holbert. Dre Hose and George Buddy. And the linebackers, middle linebacker Clafton already in on two tackles. Joining him as well. Amatia is in there. He's active. Duckett moves up and takes Ellison's place. Ellison is a, a guy who could be a pro down the road, but he's out with an injury. Tim, it was a first down on the carry by Gross, and he keeps it again, this time a four-yard gain. Jim, Georgia Southern loves to run the fullback trap. Nevada's putting big guys in the gaps in the middle with Clafton trying to take that fullback, but the Eagles expect to give Nevada problems with the option. Now, four years ago, when these two teams met, Georgia Southern had three different runners who went for 100 yards or more. They share the load. And they expect that they're going to have that type of option success against Nevada here this afternoon. Second and seven, Raymond Gross, the flex bone master, keeps it on the hip. And a short gain sets up about third and four. Holbert brought him down. Well, again, he was looking for that cutback crease. And Holbert came Tackle in the pursuit and caught him. He's the most dominant Nevada defensive lineman. Holbert is 6'3", 255. These guys are not as big as you see in Division 1A. There's no question about that. But some of them are just as strong. They work just as hard. And a lot of them are even faster. Third and four it is with a slot formation to the right. Sorrell and Belser. But they pitch it to Ross. First down, Georgia Southern and more. Touchdown. They 
say Ross is still not 100%. He has a banged up knee, but he exploded on that one. Mike Dallas on the extra point. Kick is good. Hooks it right through. 7-0, just three minutes and 26 seconds into this contest. First thing you should look for is number 63, Wilson, in the offensive line gets a good close down block. Then the kick comes, and look at number 25, Hopkins out front. Ross takes it down the side. There's absolutely no flood control, no containment. It's a wide open lane, and Georgia Southern leads 7-0 early. Already 7-0, Georgia Southern, Joe Ross scoring his 17th touchdown of the year. Jim, that's one of the advantages of playing at home. They have the crowd, they come out, the emotion carries them, they get a big return, and they drive in quickly for the score. Georgia Southern now has outscored opponents in the first quarter, 122 to 38. And going for the 50th victory at Paulson Stadium if they win today. There's the kick by Don Norton. Comes to Tremel Taylor. Timmy talked about him in the open. Taylor tries to switch sides and gets knocked down at the 17. Six yards kickoff return by Tremel Taylor. Tackle Jason, Jason Whitehead with the big pop. And here comes Fred Gatlin. He's the quarterback for the Wolfpack. Sophomore from Carson, California. He's got a big time arm too, and he's got Ray Whalen back there. Whalen. Takes those short, choppy steps. He's only 5'8", 5'9". Taylor and Ortega outside. Now, Ortega's taking a lot of the pressure off Taylor. We told you he has 84 receptions. Well, Ortega came out of nowhere this year to get 79, so you can't really double Tremell. First play from scrimmage for Nevada. Little completion over to Whalen, and a good game. Near the first. Number 22, Ray Whalen. Now the offensive line, the senior from, well, first the tight end is Scott Benning. He's caught six touchdowns this year. The center, Mike McCone from Reno. They say he is Nevada football, first team all conference. Maxwell's a junior college transfer. Bronca, tough, fundamentally sound, overachiever. Tony Wells and Shari R. Pordonish. Second and one run. And they didn't advance the football at all, running it with Whalen. And we'll see a lot of Whalen today. Just look at what he did last week 44 rushes in the victory last week against Boise State. That was a school record, 44 carries for 245 yards. He says he'd like to carry the ball 30 to 35 times today. Now, Chris Alt, the head coach at Nevada, scripts the first six plays. He uses different formations to see how Georgia Southern lines up and, and will defend things. Third down at one. Whalen's the single back. He gets the ball in the first. That's enough for the first, right at the 30. A hard-earned yard for the Wolfpack, facing a defense of Georgia Southern. Now let's meet this gang. Tim Brown is back after miss missing last week's game. Pat Parr. Pat Parr is a three-time high school heavyweight wrestling champion. Perfect position for him. There's Giff Smith. We told you he's named after Frank Gifford. Busoletti on the other side. Busoletti has 10 sacks this year. And little Mike West in the middle. Love him. He's only 5'9", 208 pounds. First down throw by Gatlin on the money. He hits his guy, Ortega. Ortega inside of the 30. And down at the 26. A gain of 42 yards. Shane Maxwell on the tackle. But there is a flag back in the offensive backfield. Holding against Reno. It's a good pass by Gatlin. He hit Ortega in stride. But it's coming back. Can't you hear him now yelling back in the hills of Nevada? Saying that's because they're playing down in Georgia Southern. Home field throwing flags. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty. Replay the down. Holding. Watch Tony Wells, number 78 right here. He's working against Giff Smith. Already his hand is out of the shoulder range and on the back. I'll tell you, Maxwell had his hands wide too, so it could have been called on either one. 
Looks a solid but a simple defense that Georgia Southern runs. Basically too deep, a lot of zone. Told you about Mike West, the little middle linebacker. He stays at home, and then the front three plays strong. The pressure comes from the outside. Very little man-to-man -man coverage by Georgia Southern. Well, Nevada in the huddle calls a timeout. So the Wolfpack, after the penalty, takes away the big play. We'll have it first and 20, trailing 7-0 when we come back. Jim Nance along with Tim Brand and John Dockery from Statesboro, Georgia. Now they decide on the home field for the for the playoffs way in advance. In fact, the home field is purchased. And it was bought for three years by the Georgia Southern School. They had them here last year, the title game, this year and next year. It's a bidding process. That's exactly right. You put in a bid. First and 20, draw play to Whalen in a gain of about four. It's just like women's basketball in the NCAA. Tennessee put in a bid, got the championship down at the University of Tennessee, and then the women advanced and played the title there. For more on this, let's bring in our guy, John Dockery. Doc? You know, Jim, you've been talking about the home field advantage for the Eagles of Georgia Southern. They call it Our House, and it's an awesome record. They are 49-2 and here at Paulson Field, 14-0 and in the playoffs, and at one point before this year, they had a 38-game home win streak, so they are indeed very tough in their house. Back to you guys. Well, in fact, Doc, they're tough everywhere. Georgia Southern's 10-game winning streak is the longest in Division I AA. The only loss this year by Nevada was a regular season matchup in the big sky against Boise State. Face mask penalty moves it back up. They get some of the yardage back, but still they had that 42-yard reception nullified by a holding penalty. But it's first and 11 from here. Incomplete pass in the area of Taylor. So it'll be second and 11. It's about to say Nevada's only loss this year was to Boise, and Ray Whalen did not play in that game. He was injured. And they came back and avenged that loss in the playoffs last week with a triple overtime victory, 59-52 against Boise. Georgia Southern's another great story. You talk about Nevada. Georgia Southern lost three straight early in the year. They were one and three, then came back and won 10 straight. Three receivers in the game. Joe King joins the group on second and 11. Swinging it over to Whalen, incomplete. And Mark Giles was in the area. When you're playing on somebody else's home field, especially in a game this big, you have to maintain your composure. When you have some flags thrown like Nevada's had here, had the big play brought back by a penalty, You've got to know that you just keep chipping away and things will eventually fall into place, but you can't go and lose the composure and try to get everything big at once. Third and 11. Gatlin changes the play at the line of scrimmage. Gets away from pressure. And incomplete intended for Whalen again. Michael Berry came barreling down on Gatlin. It'll be punting time for the Wolfpack. The young man who caught the 42-yard pass from Gatlin, the play was called back. He also punts Ross Ortega. Averaging only 36 yards a punt. He has not had one block this year, however. Yeah, but he's also at 13 inside the 20. So he's effective. Fumble. And appears to be recovered by the Wolfpack. Eric Smith. Rodney Oglesby fumbled it. The short punt fumbled by Oglesby, recovered by Nevada at the 43 of Georgia Southern. Chance Ward got there first for Georgia Southern, got the ball, and then it was just the Nevada kids that came in and took it away. Watch this. All right, here's the ball. No fair catch called. It goes right through the one and the nine. Now here comes, actually it was, uh, it was not Chance, it was Brad Allman. Allman comes down, had a chance to get it, and it was taken away by Smith. From the 44 of Georgia Southern. Ray Whalen as they continue to try to establish the running game. Short game of about three. Mike West 
Mike West on the tackle. You mentioned him earlier. He's the middle linebacker. There he is. Senior from Roswell, Georgia. He stands five feet eight inches high. He weighs about 200 pounds. Very proud of that, though. He says, I, I really look at myself like a Sam Mills, a guy who plays down in New Orleans. Same kind of size, same kind of speed. Nobody ever considered him much. Mike West is a walk-on. Was an outside linebacker last year. Eric Smith. Punishing hit after a loss of two. Shane Maxwell. Maxwell made the tackle, but then look inside at West, number 28, comes sliding down, boom, makes impact. First one to get there. That was really Mike West's play. Great Absolutely. play. Absolutely. Third down, nine to go. Zips it, complete to Ortega at the 30. First down, Reno at the 28. A gain of 14. Now, the school is going exclusively now to the name University of Nevada, but you see that even the shirts still say UNR. Used to be known as Nevada Reno. But now they're just trying to change it and be known solely as the University of Nevada. They say they are the university in that state. They say the other one's UNLV, but they are Nevada. There's that, Chris Alt. That won't make Tark happy. <laughs> <laughs> Flags come down. The play is whistle dead. Right on the field. Where's the crew from? Dead ball. Illegal snap on the offense. Still first down. Illegal procedure called Nevada threatening Georgia Southern. Those were them. And Georgia Southern hadn't allowed any points in the first quarter in the last seven games. First and 15 from the Georgia You know, Southern. so far, the big guy for Nevada has been Ortega. He was buried in the depth chart last year, was forced into the Montana game, made five receptions. They haven't been able to get him out of the lineup since. First and 15 here, Tim, from the 34. That's Taylor in motion. Gatlin on the run. Whoa, what a catch. Ortega as Whitley came up on him. Tell you this, if he takes anything else off that ball when he throws it, Whitley has it, and he's gone for a touchdown. That was a dangerous pass thrown off the wrong foot, kind of lobbed out there. It was just one-on-one, -on -one and had Whitley made that INT, if he had picked it, he would have been gone. Watch this now. Here's Gatlin. He's got the pressure coming from Maxwell, so he just kind of throws it off balance, lobs it out there. Call it second and 12, 6.30 to go in the first quarter. Another screen for Whalen. And tries to make a move on Maxwell, who stays with him, and gets some help from Whitley. Set up third and about seven. Watch Whalen run. He doesn't look that fast. They say he's got 4'6 speed, a little bit de deceptive. He's played through a hip pointer and a sprained ankle this year. Says he's more quick than he is overall fast. He's listed at 5'10, but he was, he was also quick to tell us he's only 5'8. Third and eight. Gatlin will run for it. about a yard short. Boy, he made one nice cut to pick up extra yardage. And then Mike West put the boom on him. Boy, I tell you what, that's a good old-fashioned lick right there. It's an outstanding run by Gatlin. Look at this. Comes up behind the block of Whalen. Now he sees the first down markers. He's going to slice in here, but watch number 28 in blue come up and just stop him right here. Bang! Just puts that head right under his chin and says, hello, Mr. Rodell. Good old-fashioned butt buster. Field goal time for the Wolfpack. And McKelvey, an excellent percentage this year, will try from 37 yards. And the kick. Good. 7-3. Georgia Southern still has the lead here in the first quarter. The Wolfpack's on the board.
Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. Paulson Field holds 18,000. Today there's some 21, 22,000 folks in attendance to see their Eagles defend their national championship. And you know, a lot of outstanding players have come out of Division I AA. Consider this list, the likes of Neil Lomax, Dave Meggett, Jerry Rice, just to mention a few, Charles Mann from Nevada, Tony Zendejas also out of Division I AA. But Jim Ness and uh, Tim Brandt, you know, some of these players will get a shot, a select few, but that's really not the point in Division I AA. It's really participation and enjoying the game. Back to you guys. That's right, Doc. I think there is definitely a, a great balance at this level, proper perspective, and if I wasn't uh, certain there for a minute, if I didn't hear a Harvard man with a Southern accent. That's exactly right. <laughs> Take a guy in the Ivy League, and all of a sudden he's saying, Georgia. Look out for Carl Miller. He raced the first one back a long way. Here he is again. Out to the 29. Tony Amantia on the tackle. They say Carl Miller is quick-fitted, but they say he's the most underrated, but the most valued player on the campus. Call him Night Train. He's quite a story. There he is, Carl Miller. Married, he has a little baby. They call the baby Little Train. You know how they babysit? He says when he goes to practice or class or has to study, just gets his game tapes, put them on, and Little Train sits there and watches them. Gross thought about pitching it to him, then keeps for a gain of about three. Kevin Sims on the hit. Well, Raymond Gross has not attempted a pass. He drove him the first time, some 44 yards for a touchdown. Tell you what, though, that's not really out of the ordinary. As a matter of fact, Chris Ault of Nevada was telling us he'd like to have a pretty good balance in there. He'd like to throw 35 times and run the ball 40 times. There's a pitch, an errant one that goes out of bounds near the 35. George Buddy was uh, wrapping up Raymond Gross. Tell you, that was close to being a forward lateral. I think it was. Let you be the judge. Raymond was telling us he loves to pitch downfield. He's not one of these option guys that comes down, reads quickly, and then pitches. He said he'll turn it up, and then if he gets some pressure, gets some heat, he knows his trail man's still there and will go to him. It was forward. But no call. It's third down and four to go. Out of the pocket. Overthrows near midfield. Daryl Belser. Pass intended for number eight. Look at Forey Duckett back there, too. He's having some words, doing a little wolfing with the receivers, talking to him a little bit. Duckett is starting today at left corner for Bernard Ellison. Ellison's out with a knee problem. He's the defensive MVP, All-American, defensive pro prospect, but he's got to sit out and watch this one. Terry Harvin, the four-year punter at Georgia Southern. And a good boot. Fair catch called by Taylor back at the 18. That's 47 yards on the punt by Harvin. Just four minutes to go in the first quarter. 7-3 Georgia Southern. Only the second meeting between these two schools who met in the playoffs in the semifinals, in fact, back in 86. They played at Reno that year, and Georgia Southern won it. There are flags on the field as everyone seemed to jump. Nick Davis tackled Ray Whalen. Hey, you talk about Nevada working its way through the playoffs. This is the fourth straight game in which Nevada has played a former national champion. Of course, Georgia Southern, the defending national title holder. We got offside on the defense, illegal shift on the offense. We play the down. L.V. McGinty and his crew from the Ohio Valley Conference. Well, they say everybody did something wrong in this, so they'll just First reset it, rip, nullify it, start all over again. Offsetting. Tim Stowers, the head coach at Georgia Southern, the youngest coach in Division I football. He's 32. Youngest head coach. First and 10 pass play over the top. Gatlin incomplete to Ortega. Second down. Gatlin's motion is very much over the top, isn't it, Tim? 
It really is. It's an interesting quarterback situation for the pack. They say, here's Gatlin. He's got a gun. They call him the Gatlin gun, big time arm. They say one day he may be playing on Sundays. He's that good. 6'2", 180 pounds. But ironically, over the last seven playoff quarters, overtime quarters in the playoffs to get here, they've put in the freshman, Chris Vargas. He's played every snap in the seven overtime periods. Second down and 10 to go. Overthrows Whalen. Third down. Gatlin's now four for nine, Jim, and I'll tell you this, I don't think Chris Alt in a championship game will wait if Gatlin struggles. If he continues to struggle, I think he'll put in Chris Vargas and not hesitate a bit. There he is, number 10. He's just a redshirt freshman, very, very talented quarterback. They say he's like a coach on the sidelines. He reads all the defenses and then goes up and tells Coach Alt. Three receivers to the right on third down. Dangerous pass to Taylor, incomplete. Freshman Nick Davis was all around him. Fourth down. And Steve Busoletti was putting on pressure against Gatlin. Chris Alt sends in the punting unit. Ross Ortega stays on the field to punt it. Remember the last one was fumbled by Rodney Oglesby, who stands at the 46. Ooh. There's a flag. They got the punter. A roughing penalty will be called. Fair catch at Georgia Southern 46. 34-yard punt, but Ortega was taken out after booting the football. Georgia Southern. I think it was Jason Whitehead, number 21, who came in on Ortega. It was. He laid out. He almost got the ball, but he didn't. There was no contact with the ball. There is with the kicker, and then the flag comes down immediately. It's a good call. Whitehead's got to learn to lay out in front of the football. You can't, you, you can't come toward the punter. You've got to lay out, take a different angle, like two yards in front of him, lay out for the ball. Well, was it roughing or running into? Running into the kicker. Five-yard penalty. Replay fourth down. Not an automatic first. It'll be fourth and five. That is not an automatic first. So they'll punt it once more. They want to back them up a little bit. Or take us other punt. Went only 34 yards. End over end, but over the returner's head. Now Oglesby fields it at the 30. Dives down at the 39. That was a 46-yard punt. Nine yards on the return. Tony Amantia makes the tackle. Three minutes to go in the first quarter, playing for the national championship. Division I AA title game, Paulson Stadium. It looks much bigger. There are only 18,000 seats here, but today they're expecting a crowd in excess of 25,000. Inside run by Lester Eford. Lester Eford to the 42. And let's go back down to the Dockster. You know, Jim, uh, uh, Nevada's at a disadvantage defensively because their Check best player, cornerback Bernard Ellison, hurt his knee, is not out there. This man was a Kodak All-American. Bernard, are they doing anything differently, the Eagles, today? No, it looks like they're doing the same thing we've seen on film. Um, you know, uh, the first drive they came out, everybody's probably kind of pumped up for the big game, you know, so it seemed like it all settled down. I think we just get them. I see them running right now on the option with the pitch. Jim Nance? Well, that's Miller taking the pitch. Probably a yard shy of the first, Doc. Kevin Sims cut him under. Really a shame Kevin about Sam. Bernard Ellison. He's been invited to play in the Blue-Gray game. Because of the injury, has had to decline. The East-West game, he's hopefully going to be healthy by then. Jimmy's in his sixth year at the school, and the reason for that is that he had a ruptured Achilles and actually sat out. Ruptured Achilles used to keep you out 
almost for a lifetime. Very tough thing to come back from, but they operated. They got it squared away. Now he makes his great comeback and can't play in the championship game. Sad story. Third and less than a yard. First down run by Daryl Hopkins. No, actually, that was Alonzo McGee. Senior from Perry, Georgia, picks up the first down for Georgia Southern and scoots into Nevada territory. Georgia Southern plays a lot of players. They'll use them all. You dress. Lester Eford has replaced Ross. Fake to Eford. Pitch it now to Hopkins. Here's Hopkins in the clear. Down to the 20 yard line. Corey Duckett brought him down after a 28 yard game. Told you early on that Georgia Southern loves to run the fullback trap, so Nevada puts their big guys in the middle. Then they fake to the fullback and kick it outside real quickly when everybody folds inside. Once he gets out there, he's off. Look at this. This is a great run, and there's no contain guy outside for Hopkins. And that's Eford on the run to the 17. In the final minute of the first quarter, Georgia Southern with the lead and driving. Eford's a great compliment to Ross. Joe Ross, the starting fullback. He's related to James Brooks of the Cincinnati Bengals. He's only 5'8", 231 pounds. His nicknames are the Great Pumpkin and June Bug and Bowling Ball. He thrives <laughs> off of that kind of thing, though. He's a good, tough, solid running back. Second down play, six to go. Gross keeps it. Has the first down inside of the 10. Senior from Midway, Georgia, about an hour's drive from here. Watch him keep it on the option. So far, it's exactly like the game four years ago when these two met. The option is giving Nevada all kinds of problems, and so far, they haven't been able to adjust. Gross has 43 yards rushing here in the opening quarter. First and goal to go for the Eagles. will end the first quarter a no game play and the score is Georgia Southern seven and the University of Nevada three will return to Paulson Stadium after this message and a word from your local station a line of fog hanging over these Georgian pines in the southeastern portion of this state Jim Nance along with Tim Brand and John Dockery the division one double a national championship game and the start of the second quarter Hardly a sky in the clouds up there. <laughs> Here's a second and goal pitch. It's Miller making the cut and getting down to the one. Xavier Carey made the tackle for the Wolfpack. He's so dangerous on that option. Watch now. He will pick. He'll read. He's reading even as he's faking. Look at his headset right there. He's looking to see if the man comes across. As soon as he makes those two steps, he gets it back to Miller, and Miller takes it around the corner, drives it all the way down to the one-yard line. Boy, Miller's 180 pounds, but he hits you like he's 250. Hopkins, Ross, and Eford. Full house backfield, third and goal. Ross sails. No score. Mm. Many in the crowd had reacted as though he had crossed the plane, but he hasn't. You know why? Normally when he goes up and over like that, he's always getting in. They assume as soon as he left, it was going to be a touchdown. But watch this. He leaves at the three and a half yard line. He goes over and the linebackers come up and they just turn him away. Look at this. Bang. Put him back on the one. Fourth and goal. Try it again. No. They hold him on a goal line situation. Nevada Reno. A goal line stand and credit Mike Rogers and George Buddy. Well, you better put Reggie Robinson in there, number 32, too. See him at linebacker? Watch him come up and over and meets him head on. Amantia came in and forced it, but it was Robinson, the linebacker, came up and over. They went head first into each other. 
Look at that. And here comes 55, Amantia, just to push him away. Tremendous defensive stand by Reno. Out of the end zone, Gatlin looking for Taylor, and he can't run it down. Giles almost did. You said he has a big time arm. He threw that one way downfield, some 60 yards in the air. Chris Alt was telling us he can throw the ball 70 yards off the back foot. He ended up right in the middle of that G and Eagles spelled across the end zone. Watch this. There he is sitting there, and then he releases it and has his own man push right back into him. That was Bronca. He's only four for 11 now, 30 yards. He's missed his last four passes. Second and 10, still throwing out of there. Hits Ortega, who makes the slant move back to the 11, maybe an, uh, just a yard shy of the first. Boy, there's a good play right there. First of all, you go to your three-step drop and you get it out to Ortega. It alleviates the pressure coming from the defense because you release it so quickly. You get it out to Ortega and just let him go with it. That puts the pressure on the secondary. Ortega is a rah-rah type guy. Three handicap golfer, you kind of guy. You gotta split that. You heard him. You've gotta split that. What does that mean? That, was he referring to the three handicap? I don't know. I don't <laughs> think he's talking about the eights. <laughs> Come on, Lloyd! Come on, baby. You gotta push here now. Chris Alts, also the athletic director. Let's go, Pack! Who's the quarterback for Nevada in the 60s? Winning his coach, on, Big Sky History. Come on, McCall! They measure for it, and they're less than a yard shy for the first. So third and a yard to go. Two tight ends, Tom Williamson comes in. They call Wayland's number, easily gets the first out to the 18. Trips, eight, fire, 25 bar, 44. First and 10 from the 18. Ortega to 23. And no more. Rodney Oglesby on the hit. You know, Ortega was unknown, really, last year, midway through the year, until Nevada played Montana, and he had five receptions in that game. And ever since then, he's been a big part of this team. You mentioned. Got four catches for 32 yards. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Ortega is the receiver wide to the left. He's got him. Incomplete intended for Joe King. Well, you know what? Gatlin's not even close. King had split the zone and was wide open. All he had to do was throw it down the middle of the field. Instead, threw it to the, thing, the outside. And King had to readjust his route. Here he is now. You're from behind. Number one, Fred Gatlin. Right down the middle of the seam, King was wide open. Then he threw it to his right. He had to readjust. Gave Mark Giles, number 10, time to come over. Poorly thrown ball by Fred Gatlin. Big hit put on by Tim Brown after the pass released. Third and four. Over the top. Complete for the first to Ortega. A gain of 11. Now remember, Ortega had 15 receptions last week. Or 15 two weeks ago against Furman. That was a school record. He's caught 25 passes in the last two games, and he continues at that torrid pace. Absolutely. He's got five already in this game for 43 yards. He's been the hot man, the go-to man, and the reason for that, everybody's loading up to stop Taylor, the All-American. Nevada first down run by Whalen. Near the 40, Michael Berry on the hit. Michael Berry. 
This is for the Division One AA National Championship. Statesboro, Georgia is the site. And an injured player on the field here in the second quarter. Looks like Alan Maxwell. He's the junior college transfer. They wanted to redshirt him, but they just couldn't keep him out of the lineup. He became such a valuable asset on that offensive line. You know, Nevada really had to totally rebuild its offensive line. Only Mike McCone started the season and has remained in there. By the fourth game of the year, they had lost both tackles and one of the guards. And by game seven, they lost the other guard. So it's, it's been totally patchwork offensive line. They've done an outstanding job. Pat Rippey, the offensive line coach, has worked miracles, almost like the loaves and fish, just multiplied talent. We'll be right back. Georgia Southern has just fumbled the football for the second time in this game and recovered by Nevada. And at the conclusion of this game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player from each team. And for the 20th consecutive year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Nevada takes over at the 36. Ray Whalen runs it. And a gain of about four. Oglesby had the angle on him. Boy, look at this. You think that's not a telling thing? Georgia Southern with 125 yards. Nevada just 73. Nevada has just 17 yards rushing. That's it. Georgia Southern leads in everything, including lost fumbles, too. Second and six, Whalen breaks one tackle, picks up the first. There's a nice piece of running. A gain of 12 for Maxwell made the tackle, but they move it into Georgia Southern territory. You know, they talk about his short, choppy steps. They talk about how he wigs and waggles once he gets down in the hole. It's very obvious here. Nice move, just kind of takes the safety and takes him inside. Butimer had no shot at him, just overcommitted to the middle, and Whalen cut back out. Best run so far. First down, Wolfpack at the 48. With a flag down, it's Whalen again, a gain of two. For he meets Steve Busoletti. His crew from the Ohio Valley Conference called the infraction right away. Decline, second down. The legal shift. Alan Maxwell has returned now at left guard. Gatlin gets the explanation. Just a sophomore from Carson, California. He led Carson to two California state championships. Now trying to lead Nevada to the national championship of Division I AA. Joe King comes out into the ball game. Ortega goes out. Ortega's hiding on the sidelines. Trick play. Makes the catch off the tip. And gains about four, trying to confuse him and trick him. You know what they did, Jim? They had 10 guys in the ball game. And they bring in number 19. That's Joe King. It looks like he's coming in. Ortega looks like he's going out, but hides on the sidelines. All right, now there's Ortega hiding on the sidelines. It looked like he went out of the game. Totally uncovered, but the ball gets tipped and saves a touchdown because there's absolutely nobody out there. Trick play, almost worked. Great defense by Georgia Southern. I'll tell you, Darius Dawson got a hand on it to deflect it, slow it down. Otherwise, it may have been a score. Third down and six. And there he is again, Darius Dawson with back-to-back -back plays. This time last year, he was playing in high school. He's a true freshman. They call him the phenom. They say he's a phenomenal freshman. Matter of fact, they play all six linebackers at Georgia Southern. Just comes free. Nobody picks him up on the blitz, untouched, and makes a great tackle. Two big plays in a row for Darius Dawson. True freshman from Moultrie, Georgia. Now Ortega punts. Oglesby. Gets to the 21. 
39-yard punt by Ortega. 38 yards, seven on the return. Has not been as wide open as we had expected. But we're only midway second quarter. Georgia Southern's Joe Ross has scored the game's only touchdown. As we bring you back inside Paulson Stadium. And a chance to talk with the legend around here. John Dockery's with him, in fact. Doc? Thank you, Jim. I'm with Eric Russell. And Eric, I want to ask you a question. Why in the world would a successful defensive coordinator at Georgia leave there to come to a school that hasn't had football since Pearl Harbor and coach a bunch of vagabonds in secondhand uniforms? It sounds crazy. Why did you do it? Well, John, I'm sure a lot of people thought I was crazy, and maybe I was, but for new and different uh, challenges and experiences, not that I was in a rut at Georgia. We had just won a national championship, but this place excited me. The president, Dale Lick at that time, wanted a football team, and he wanted it to be Division I, and I thought that would be real interesting. Coach, I want to ask you how you did it from a club football team to a national championship after this play. This play, Gross keeps it, needs a block to set him free. Oh, and he got a good one. A good block by Belser and Eford. 27 yards. He faked to Eford, and then upfield got a block from Belser. 82 yards running now for Raymond Gross. I can't figure out what the defense is doing. There's nobody out there to take the pitch, man. The safety's got to come up and support on the run, and they're not doing that. They're getting some outstanding blocking, though, from their backs and their wide receivers, and Gross is just making that option work all afternoon. From the Georgia Southern 48, it's Eford into Nevada territory. After a gain of four, let's go back to Doc. Uh, thank you, Jim Nance. Uh, Coach, I was asking you, how do you go from club football one year to a national championship a mere four years later? Well, we had good players, the players who played good together, had great support from our administration, student body, faculty, and we had a lot of luck. You got to have that. Uh, well, you're a legend around here three times, Coach of the Year. Jim? Gross on the keep after some good fakes. Picks up the first inside of the 40. Well, he retired, did Irk Russell, last year after winning the championship on this field. And just a few days later, his hand-picked assistant, Tim Stowers, was given the job. Here are the accomplishments. Championships in 85, 86, and 89. First down play, Eford, a gain of a yard. Clafton made the stop. Clafton's going to be watching that fullback all afternoon. But you know, when you're playing the triple option like this, you've got to assign certain people. You've got to have that guy right there, 45, Clafton, take the fullback. You've got to have the tackle close down and pinch down on that quarterback and have the support come on the outside and force it back in and take the pitch man. You have to watch those three aspects of the option. Second and nine inside again. Eford, ball comes free, recovered by Nevada. Xavier Carey on the third turnover of the first half. Lester Eford has the ball stripped immediately. Just got a hand on it. I couldn't tell who that was. Got a hand on it, knocked it loose. Tim Georgia Southern now has turned it over three times and was denied once on a goal line stand by the Nevada defense. Now the Wolfpack from its 30. Double tight end set. Ray Whalen written down by Shane Maxwell. Now. Here we go. Look here. Let's go. Tack hey, that ass, baby. Come listen, on. listen, listen. When he comes now, you got to take that fullback, okay? Or he's going to be another blocker. All right? So take him. That was Georgia. Well, actually, that was Nevada's Ken Mizell, the defensive coordinator, talking about the Georgia Southern offense. He's talking about those assignments we were just talking about. You've got to take all three people in that type of attack. Second and eight, no gain for Whalen. Whalen. 
Mike West and Paul Sickley on the tackle. 425 remaining in the first half. Nevada has to feel very good about itself right now. Trailing just seven to three, even though the first half has been dominated by Georgia Southern. They're staying in this ball game because of the three fumbles by Georgia Southern, but they've got to get something going offensively to protect their defense. Taylor to the left, Ortega to the right. Third down, eight to go, and Gatlin again is sacked. Tim Brown this time. Third sack of the first half for Georgia Southern. Big old Timmy Brown, he's 6'3", 262-pound senior. He was overlooked by a lot of Division I schools. After they played Florida State this year, the coaches from the FSU said, hey, this guy could play for us, he could play for Miami, he could play for Florida. He's that kind of player. He's big, strong, and quick, and he's smart. And he missed last week against Central Florida with a sternum injury. Back in the lineup today, and a big play there. Still, the pressure remains on Ortega, but gets it away once more. Oglesby with a flag down back at the 20. 39 yard punt by Ortega. Seven yard return by Rodney Oglesby. Punt measuring 40 yards, seven on the return. Right on the field. Holding against the Wolfpack. Holding called against the Wolfpack. Keep the ball away. Holding on the kicking team, decline, first down. This first half uh, moving at a rapid pace. And that works out well for the halftime entertainment. Greg Allman's here today, local guy, performing at halftime today, and then tonight playing in San Francisco. Kind of like your schedule. <laughs> Routine doubleheader. We'll be right back. Georgia Southern still clinging to that 7-3 to three lead over Nevada in the Division I AA championship game. Jim Nance along with Tim Brand and John Dockery and ready for action. The Eagles from their 43-yard line. Wrestled down after a one-yard gain, Matt Clafton on the tackle. And Tim, you said it, the story so far, turnovers and that big goal line stand. Well, ironically, Georgia Southern's only turned the ball over twice before this game in the playoffs. They come in here, they fumble the ball three times, and it's really taken them out of the rhythm. Otherwise, they've been dominating this game against Nevada. Nevada has to feel very fortunate right now just being down 7-3. to three. Second and nine. Looking long, going long. Man is out there, and it's caught inside of the 10 by Terrence Sorrell. He's Nevada. There. Nevada, Jim, plays a lot of man coverage. They take pride in the fact they can bump and run. This time, Duckett gets locked on on the wide receiver, and he comes out and watch this, man-to-man -man coverage, and he's behind him. Completion to Terrence Terrell. First and goal from the He had eight. one foot in, and Sorrell, their deep threat, gets him inside the 10. From there, Gross keeps, Gross scores, touchdown, Georgia Southern. Explosion. Gross to Sorrell for 49 yards, then to keep for the score. And the extra point by Dallas is good. He gets good. That makes the score. Georgia Southern 14, Nevada 3. Boy, you've got the big pass to Sorrell. They find Duckett gets caught behind him. They come right back with the option, which has been successful all day. And there he is. Gross just takes it himself, tucks it under. That's a lot of progress for a quarterback, a senior who came in here, and in his first day of practice, couldn't take a snap. Dropped his first five snaps from center. Couldn't hold on to it. The coaches looked at each other and said, no way this guy will ever play here. Well, he got into the starting lineup a couple games into the season. They haven't been able to remove him since. He's a talent. Grew 
up a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. Roger Staubach was his favorite player. He ran it like Roger the Dodger for the touchdown on that one. And he's got 99 yards, Timmy. Raymond Gross today on national television could become the Gross national product for Georgia <laughs> Southern. Beats the receive for the Wolfpack, number five, Chris Sutton. That's a good one. Number 11, Clamell Taylor. 14 to 3. handles the kicking chores. Singleton and Taylor wait at the 10. And it sails out of bounds. Kick goes out of bounds. Right on the field. I saw him looking at his... Uh, at his left hand after he got up after the touchdown. Big bag of ice on him right now. Yep. Wiggled the hand after he got up. Albert Huntley is his backup quarterback. Don Norton will kick off again from the 30. Just call him GNP the rest of the day. GNP. Gross national product. This is a great read by Gross. Comes down and he sees the man already goes out to the pitch man. Anytime he makes that commitment outside, you just take it, tuck it, and go underneath of him. Boy, old Frank Sullivan just came up and committed himself right away. And he landed right on that left hand. The re-kick from the 30. Taylor from the eight. Jamel Taylor to the 20. And walloped at the 26 by Don Hudson. Well, this is like a bowl game with the title on the line. We have two bowl games coming up on CBS Sports. First, let's show you the, the hit put on by Hudson. First and ten, That one will rattle the shoulder pads. And used to coach at the Big Sky. At Idaho. Here in Nevada, completes it on first down. Tramel Taylor. That's his first reception. Little guy looks a little bit like John Madden, doesn't he? The little guy? <laughs> They need some explosion out of Taylor. Second and four, and a screen to Whalen. Flag on the ground, as you see. Bouncing around like a pinball and tackled at the 38. Pass complete to Whalen. Bustelletti on the tackle. Flag on the field. Less than two minutes to go here in the opening half. 14-3, Georgia Southern. Watch what happens to Gross after he throws it. The backside pressure's coming from Smith, or Gatlin, rather, and then Gatlin gets hit from behind. Old Giff Smith comes in there, three-time All-American. Just wants to let him know he's in the neighborhood. Had a nice talk with Giff Smith's dad yesterday. Frank played at Clemson. Second and nine. Man is open, Eric Smith, and he stepped out short of the first. Could have gotten the extra yard, it seems. And let's go back downstairs to Doc. Yeah, just an update, Jim, on uh, Raymond Gross, the quarterback. Well, he's fine. What happened is he sprained his left hand, the thumb on his left hand. He'll be back into play. Should have no problem throwing the ball, so he'll be back. His counterpart, Fred Gatlin, brings the team to the line of scrimmage on third and one. Whalen has the first. Out to the 45. Nice opening for him. 
Tom Williams in the tight end got a big block, open things up for for Whalen. Those are the two guys. Whalen and Taylor are the keys. They've got to keep getting them involved First in the game. Down. Taylor, as you mentioned, has not been involved in the game at all. Greg Gumbel and Mike Francesa coming up at halftime college football today. Screen pass to Keith Washington. You hear the hits as he goes down at the 45. Whoop, they move it back to the 46. But Jim, they're in the hurry up offense now, and for the first time, it looks like they're, they're getting into a rhythm. Under a minute now, the clock is moving. 55 seconds. Second down. Less than a yard shy of the first on second down. That gets him the first. Michael Barry on the tackle. Hand off to Ray Whalen. Tackle by Mike Barry. That'll stop the clock while they move the chains. And they'll take a timeout as well. That'll leave Nevada with one. One timeout time left here in the half. 40 seconds on the clock. Needing a score right before the intermission. They're driving. Chris Alt talks to his quarterback. Fred Gatlin, how important is it here for the pack before the intermission? I think it's extremely important. They're down 14 to 3, 40 seconds left. What they don't want to do is rush things here. They still have one timeout left. They can use the sidelines. Right now, we'll see if Gatlin's a curator of clocks, see how he manages that 40 seconds. down for him. Goes for the long ball. Ortega's out there. Batted away by Oglesby. Well, you know the thing is, too, Ortega thinks he's open. Look at 83 running down here. Here comes Oglesby. They say, here's another guy that could play in the NFL. He has the school record for career interceptions with 12. He's very quiet, but extremely confident. Came back, played the corner, knew exactly where the sidelines were and how he could close on the football. Outstanding play. 33 seconds left in the second quarter. And it away again, this time by Jim Udimer. Georgia Southern's just sitting in a zone and they're just reading Gatlin. Gatlin's just tipping where he's going, never looking off the receiver, throwing down into what he thinks is a seam. And the safety just closes, the corner comes over, and they knock it away. 28 seconds left in the second quarter. Now it's third and ten. Intended for Ortega. I'll tell you what, Gatlin hit five straight, and now he's on a string of 0 for 3. So with 40 seconds left, he's moving the ball. Looks like the offense gets back into a rhythm. He's five in a row, and now he goes zing, 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 0 for 3. Fourth down. The pack's going to go for it. 23 seconds left in the second quarter. Trailing 14-3. There's all kinds of room. First down and stops the clock at the 22 with 13 seconds left. Gatlin, the ball carrier. 17-yard scamper by Gatlin. Ortega just lays out sickly at the end of this play, but again, here's Gatlin looks, finds that everybody's covered in the zone, packs it away, knows where the sticks are, gets him. Watch him try to stay in bounds. Whoop, and then goes out. 13 seconds left in the second quarter. One timeout to work with. Throws it away, incomplete. Tremel Taylor was in the area. They throw a late flag. Flag on the play. You can't call that grounding because Taylor was within three or four yards of it. I thought it was a very smart play. He knew he was going down. He was getting sacked. Well, it is against Nevada. 
drops the hit after the Without pass is thrown. Not so much the hit as much as the pressure. He knows the pressure's coming. He can feel it and just tries to dump it and then tries to call a timeout while he's laying on the ground. Look at this. It was an ineligible receiver downfield. That was the call. It was not a grounding call. I got I'm out. Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern calls a timeout. The penalty backs the football to the 26. Only eight seconds left in the quarter. We've got halftime coming up with Greg Gumbel and Mike Francesa later today on CBS. Football action continues. Redskins have come under a lot of criticism for their inconsistency. They play well one week and then come back and disappear the next. Of course, Rippon was hurt, came back, played outstanding in the game in return, but then got a little bit shaky. But for the last two weeks, the Redskins have been more consistent, beating the Bears and the Dolphins the last two weeks. All right, they're not going to try anything fancy. They'll attempt the 44-yard field goal with eight seconds left in the half. McKelvey already won for one on the day. This from 44. Sails through the uprights and puts Nevada within eight. That was his 30th field goal of the season. Now 30 for 35. And what a percentage that is. That's uh, that's 86 percent. Well, you can see while he's the all big sky place kicker, extremely accurate, as long as it's 52. He's got to be one of the best in the country. Also a well-rounded guy, 3.5 grade point average in logistics management. Academic All-American, just named this weekend. We've got a great kicking tradition at Nevada. You remember the Zentejases, Marty and Tony. Both were place kickers for the school. Some of the others in Diaz's were kicking down in Arizona, like Luis. Arizona State, I believe. Well, Arizona and Arizona State. <laughs> a lot, the lot is in Diaz's. Now, just three seconds in the second quarter remaining. On the scoop, Georgia Southern's Whitehead. How about this run? That'll end the first half. Nevada did not get a touchdown. Two field goals in the opening half for Nevada. Two touchdowns by Georgia Southern. So the score is 14-6 Eagles. CBS Sports coverage of college football will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Singleton and Taylor wait for the kick from Georgia Southern. Don Norton. Sun has broken through the clouds, the low clouds. High fog this morning. Big kick by Norton. Takes Taylor seven yards deep. He'll down it for a touchback. Now, coming out of the locker room, our John Dockery was there for an interview. And here's what we had from Doc. Coach, the offense in the first half, sporadic at best. What changes for the second half? Well, you know, John, we're, we're really our worst enemy. We're moving the ball on them, and, and uh, yet we've had some real crucial sacks at crucial times. Our tackle hasn't been stepping out fast enough because we think we can throw the ball on them. You know, we're moving it again. Our worst enemy has been us. Thank you, Coach. Interesting. They still feel like they can throw the ball against them. Haven't seen any indication why they ha won't. They've got to get Taylor involved. Gatlin remains the quarterback. It's a free play. And a loss of two with a flag on the field. Gatlin, the ball carrier, tackled by... Looked like Pat Parr may have jumped from his node guard spot. 
to see if he was drawing off or not. Offside on the defense, five yard penalty, still play first down. For this week, we spoke with the defensive coordinators from Georgia Southern. Their group is on the field right now, Tommy Spangler and Jeff McInerney, and they told us, we're going to play go get them baby football. Which means just going after it, hard as you can go. <laughs> and it's worked so far. Whalen on the carry on first and five, and just past the line of scrimmage he gets. Parr and Smith on the tackle. Whalen now 15 carries, 57 yards, so he's doing his part. He's got to start banging a little bit harder and get some more support up in that offensive line. Also, I think if they do start hitting those wide receivers in the passing game goes, it'll open things up even more for Whalen. He averages 107 yards per game. Coming off a 200-yard performance last week. Second and four, Taylor on the short route does not get the first. Oglesby on the hit right after the reception. It'll be third and one. See, that's the kind of play you can work all afternoon. Little three steps as the quarterback does as well. It's almost like a flanker screen. They get it to him in a hurry. They just let him run. You saw him, TNT as they know him. Jamel Taylor come to the near side on third and one. Throwing on the run, low pass retrieved by Ross Ortega for a first. In the last drive of the first, first half, and ten pack at the, the pack moved the ball effectively with a lot of rhythm in their hurry up offense. That's pretty much what they're coming back with now. They got a field goal out of that. Let's see if they can continue that rhythm right here with a methodical drive. On first down, Whalen. One on one tackle by Mike West. Tackle by Mike West. They know him as the midget middle linebacker, and he is some fierce competitor, isn't he? He's playing an outstanding game, too. See the blood there on his white pants? He likes that. He says he likes to get in there and have a bloody nose type game. He, again, he's only 5'9. He was a walk on outside linebacker. He played defensive end, moved him inside to the middle, and he loves it. Playing in his last game, hopes to go into the coaching profession. Mike West. Second down and nine. There's Whalen running free. Lost his footing near the first down. They'll spot it back at the 43, which is a yard short. And off to Ray Whalen. Ray Whalen said we felt going into this season that we were going to get here. We were going to get to Statesboro. We're down. Felt like we had that kind of team coming off a conclusion of 89 where they won three straight to close out the year. Third down, he does not get it. Nick Davis and Tim Brown. Now let's see where they spot it. Maybe I jumped the gun a bit. It's third and a long yard. I don't believe he has it, Tim. They're going to measure for it. You know what's interesting about Georgia Southern's defense is the fact that they bring in in short yardage Darius Dawson and Nick Davis and Michael Berry the backup linebackers, and yet when you talk to the coaches and you talk to the scouts and you talk to the fans, they say their backup lineups, linebackers, may be better than the starters. Of course, Michael Berry, they say, could be the best guy ever to play at Georgia Southern. He's still a backup. He's a junior. Started as a freshman. So last time I'm going to, going to guess on one of those, they stretch it out, and it's a first down. Well, that was the key. They stretched it out. You weren't thinking about how far they could stretch those chains. <laughs> oh, well. The drive continues, opening possession of the second half. And the Wolfpack. Drove for a field goal right before the half, coming right back now. A touchdown and a two away from tying it. Ortega, look nice at the move, move he makes. And gets down to the 42, that's another first down. Put the spin on Rodney Oglesby. Now eight receptions today for, for uh, Ross Ortega. This is the kind of move that Art Monk likes to make. First of all, it's a quick out. They hit him on a run. Now watch this move. Stops, feels the pressure, goes back to the inside. But I want you to watch 95 and Blue Gift Smith coming from the back. Look at that. That's a pretty good lick by the 6'1", 230-pound linebacker, or left defensive end. 
Whalen back to the line of scrimmage. Smith and Busoletti on the tackle. Whalen, the ball carrier. Tackled by Michael Berry. You know, I might go back to that trick play they tried earlier, where they had Breaking 10 down. guys and they send Joe King in and they hide Ortega. Because I'm not so sure Georgia Souther even knew what happened. Second and 10 with three receivers in. Pass all the way. Dangerous pass. Off his pass. Off his back foot. Almost caught on the rebound. Incomplete its rule. Kevin Whitley was jumping for it. He's the defensive back from Georgia Southern. Darius Dawson was rushing the quarterback. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a terrible pass. He felt the pressure, just tried to unload it. When things are going as well as they've been going, you don't want to turn the ball over and just put it up for grabs. That's what they did. Threw it right back into the three-man zone back there, and Oglesby had a shot at it. See, he could just feel the pressure closing in. They were pinching him, and he just threw it up for anybody. Third and ten. Now with his feet planted, going to King at the five and down at the one. Well, that was a beautiful strike from Gatlin to Joe King, a gain of 41. There was a flag thrown right at the point of the reception. Tackle by Kevin Whitley, flag on the field. It's going to be interference against Georgia Southern, I'm sure. Defensive pass interference, penalty declined. First down. And King was twisted down just shy of the goal line. That's King's first catch of the game. Really came into his own the last half of the season. He's got 38 now for the year. First and goal from the one. 11th play of the drive. It's Whalen with a flag down. Dropped at the seven. Freshman Nick Davis. Well, let's check the flag. I believe it's going to be against Georgia Southern. So after a great play, that'll be nullified. Offside on the defense. We play the first down. It's exactly right. It's against Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern penalized for offside. Georgia Southern has some active true freshman linebackers, don't they? Darius Dawson and Nick Davis. Absolutely, and they're good. We're in Statesboro, Georgia. Home of Georgia Southern University. Playing for the national championship. Opening drive of the third quarter. Nevada can tie it with a touchdown and a two. First and goal from the one. Straight ahead, Whalen knocks heads and does not get in. Hand off to Whalen. Well, she talked about Dawson. They call him Second the phenom, down. the phenomenal freshman. Nick Davis, he came from the same high school as Jesse Tuggle of the Falcons. And then Michael Barry, we said the coaches have already mentioned he could be perhaps the best linebacker ever to play here. Second and goal from the one. Whalen again. It's time. He is stopped again. It's the same end of the field where Nevada came up with a big goal line stand in the opening half. Now the nose of that ball is almost touching the goal line. You know what I do? They say they're the center. McCone is Mr. Football. He is Nevada football, the best guy on the offensive line. You've got Gatlin, who is a terrific quarterback. I put him right on the butt of McCone and follow him in in the quarterback sneak. Just blow him out, make him challenge a one-on-one -on -one right now. Just under nine minutes left in the third quarter. Third and goal from the one. Straight ahead, and Whalen maybe even lost a yard. Did you see how deep he lined up? He had to run five yards before he got to the line of scrimmage. Here goes Brown. Offensive line surge, Georgia Southern wins that. Whalen loses yardage. He was actually outside the five-yard line when he lined up, had to run almost five yards to get back to the line of scrimmage, and by then, Georgia Southern had already penetrated. Wolfpack will attempt the field goal. They will not go for it on fourth and goal from about the two-yard line. This will be a 19-yard attempt. 
Too much time. Right on the field. Play clock is at zero. So a goal line stand in the first half by the Wolfpack, and now the Eagle defense. The Eagle defense shuts them down from the one. And McKelvey, already two for two in this game, field goal kicking. They'll back them up five more yards. Against the offense, five yard penalty, we play fourth down. Penalty against the Wolfpack moves the ball back five yards. Call this a 24 yard attempt. Tom Williamson is the holder. Mike McCone on the snap. Kick on the way and the kick. Hold on a minute. No good. Kick is no good. He had made kicks from 37 and 44 yards, and he misses the chippy. Chris Alt just has to be going crazy watching his team self-destruct here. They've got the perfect shot. He kicks it straight away instead of to the left angle. Right over top of the upright. It remains 14-6. Well, Nevada kept the football for the first seven minutes and seven seconds of the third quarter, but comes up empty. Now let's take it down to the sidelines and John Dockery. Oh, thank you, Jim. I'm with the Miller boys, the governor of Nevada, Miller, governor-elect of Georgia, also Miller. Are you guys related? Well, that's my cousin, Zell. You know, he, he's gracious enough to give us some southern hospitality. Now, I understand you guys have a uh, friendly wager. What is it, Zell? Oh, we've got a little wager on this game. Bob is wagering some special sausage that he can tell you about, and I've got some special kind of North Georgia sorghum syrup. Either one goes good with biscuits. And, Bob, you're hoping for overtime? Well, we only win in overtime. You know, we, we don't play a normal game, so in fact, triple overtime, anything less would be less spectacular for us. Thank you to you both. Okay, Jim. <laughs> Taking over at the 20. Gross on the keep. And a first down run out to the 33. That will put him over 100 on the game. 13-yard game by Raymond Gross. He rushed for over 100 in last year's championship game. First time he's gone over 100 this year, though. Now he has 112 yards. First down at the Eagle, 33. He's been hot all through the playoffs. He's thrown for five touchdowns, no interceptions. He was 27 of 39 coming into this game. First and 10 from the 33. Inside to Ross. He scored the game's opening touchdown. Gain of about five. You heard Governor Miller of Nevada say we only win in overtime. Well, his Wolfpack was a, a touchdown and a two-point conversion away from tying this game and getting us on track to a possible overtime. The overtime is another great aspect of Division I AA that I really enjoy, and I think that Division I-A should adopt it. I think they should, too. I think they should look at it very closely. Second and five and a loss of a yard on the keep by Gross. If the game ends in a tie, here's what happens. The referee decides which... 25-yard line will start, start on, so they walk down to the 25. You flip a coin. The winner has the ball first or second, whatever they choose. Most of them go on defense first so they can see what the other guy does. They have a, one possession to score, field goal or a touchdown. They can kick a field goal or they can get a first down even. Then after they have their series and their possession, switch sides, the other team does it. Now Nevada advanced to the finals by winning back-to-back -back games in triple overtime, three overtimes. Third and six. Gross gets the first. Someone reached out for him, and he just ran away with the wind out to the 48, a gain of 11. Georgia Southern runs only about five plays. That's it, and they repeat them over and over. They will use some different formations, but it's a very simple offense. They run that option constantly. They like to go with Gross and Ross, their fullback. And they also go on the same snap count all the time, which is unusual because that's one of the advantages that the offense has over the defense. But they just like the rhythm and the repetition. First and 10 play action fake. Gross, the ball touched the ground. They didn't call it dead. But now he's tackled at the 43. Clafton and Holbert were putting the pressure on him. It was Holbert first with the pressure. Did the ball touch the ground? That would have 
ruled the ball dead, or the play dead. Here's Holbert coming in on him. Does a good job of getting away. Now why? Now you can't tell from there, but matters very little anyway because he only gained another yard. Lose the football in a hurry that way, though, isn't? Can't you? It's dangerous. Just like that, picked up in midair by Nevada, Matt Clafton. And the fourth turnover today by Georgia Southern. Well, you mentioned the way he was carrying it was extremely dangerous. Gets hit, pops, and the pick. Another turnover, Georgia Southern. Boy, they're doing their best to keep Nevada in the football game. There's the hit, head on, tucks his tail, skies his eyes, puts his name right there, and then Marion comes up with the big hit. Well, the Wolf Pack of Nevada set up now at the 42 of Georgia Southern. Four turnovers we mentioned by the Eagles, and the Wolf Pack has not turned it over, but trails in this game. Clafton, there he is. Matt Clafton just made the recovery. D-Town, shotgun. What's up to my homies in Rialto now? D-Town, Dublin, California is his hometown. Jim, just have the feeling that Nevada's ready to explode. They've had all the opportunities, squandered them, but they're ready to roll now. You have that feeling. Eric Smith. Bangs head after picking up the first. I agree. I concur. Eric Smith, interested to see him get into the offensive now. That, those blocking backs in this Nevada offensive scheme, that's basically what they do is block. He had 21 receptions coming into the game. That's his second this afternoon. First down from the Eagle 30. Five minutes left in the third quarter. 14-6, Georgia Southern. Nevada set up at the 30. Delay give, Whalen. Fumbles the ball. Maybe the first turnover today for the Wolfpack. Fight for it on the ground. Georgia Southern has it. Sean Harrelson. Fumble recovery by number 98, Sean Harrelson. This is amazing. Both teams are hurting themselves. Whalen cuts back inside, then gets the hit from the backside, and then it's the front side hit that just knocks it loose. Got a lot of pressure in there. Brown and Smith, Parr and Busoletti. Three helmets hit the ball and just knocked it loose. yard plunge for the Hand Eagles. Joe Ross. Joe Ross. Tackle by number 55, Tony Amantia. Here's a guy, Joe Ross, who has a chance to play on Sundays next year. Oh, he sure does. 6'1", well over 200 pounds now. Put on a lot of weight since he's come to college. He's got 4'5 speed. That'll get you into the league anyway. Get you a look. Dangerous pitch. Ross fields it. And then goes out of bounds after a gain of about five. Frank Thank Sullivan was taking out Raymond Gross as he made the pitch. Ross saved that play. Look at him shake his head, saying, come on, let's be more careful with this football. We've got the lead. Let's protect it. Here he comes again. Now, Gross says he's not afraid to pitch it once he crosses the line of scrimmage, but he has to get it up over 51 Sullivan's head. Pitches it high, and Ross makes an outstanding catch. Mm -hmm. I tell you, you want a number? This is the 56th game as a starter for Ross. That's durability. That may be a record. Gross keeps for the first down. He's a third and four carry, and he gets the first out to the 45. Tackled by Matthew Clapton. First and ten, Eagles from the Time of possession. You know, we talked when you defend against the option, you've got to take away the fullback, the pitch man, and the quarterback. You have to assign those. Idaho went to a 6-1 defense to try to stop this offensive attack. Ross up the middle, spins for a gain of four on first down. Joe Ross, the ball carrier, tackled by Steve Bryant. Of course, when Idaho went to a 6-1 defense, they had some success but had some breakdowns. Georgia Southern still won 28-27. Second down from the Second 47. and seven. 348 left in the third quarter. 
Rusty Parrish snaps it to Gross. Comes in and is walloped from behind by D.O. Ship. Raymond Gross tackled by number 90. Well, they Dio call Ship, Ship the emotional leader of this defensive front. Trying everything he can to get him fired up. They've been stumbling, really struggling. Head coach is in the bench area, Chris Ald. He's also the offensive coordinator. Been here so many times, six trips to the playoffs. Chris Ald, Nevada has yet to win a national championship. It's eluded him every time. Third down play, third and five, and zips it complete. Miller, Miller makes a move to get free and out of bounds all the way down near the 30. Frank Sullivan finally runs him out, but not until he gains 20. 20. Pass completion to Carl Miller. Run out of bounds by number 51, Frank Sullivan. Carl Miller's made some big plays from the get-go. Well, there's too many holes in the defense. Guys are running out of their areas. They're running out of their zones. They're reading eyes and not reading the football. They're not watching who's coming through. He Boy. ran back the opening kick to set up the first touchdown all the way down to the 40 of Nevada. Now this catch and run gets the football to the 30. He's out of there now on this play. McGee replaces him, but it's Ross. No, it's Gross. Now the pitch. A great move. And down to the two is Daryl Hopkins. A gain of 28 playing at home. The crowd is fired up, and now there's more confidence than ever with Raymond Gross. Gross runs this option. Watch him now. Feels the backside pressure. Crosses the line. Takes it up nine yards before he finally releases it. Knows the trail man is there at all times. And Hopkins takes it down inside the five, close to the three. First and goal from there. Timeout called by Nevada. What a fake by Raymond Gross. I mean, he stuck that football right into the belly of Joe Ross and took it back away, ran the option to set him up now for another possible score. Well, for the Bills, that means Frank Wright out of the University of Maryland comes in now. Gross on the pitch, Hopkins on the touchdown. Hopkins really set up the touchdown with a long run. Now the extra point from Mike Dowis. He kicked the winning field goal in last year's game against Stephen F. Austin to win the title. Kick. I believe it was partially blocked, and it's no good. That is a big miss. It makes the difference only 14 in the game. Nevada six. Could come back later. And of course, Nevada's had that comeback magic working in the playoffs. Here's Dallas. You see the snap is, is hard to handle. The holder does finally get it up, but it takes Dallas out of his rhythm. Dallas is a transfer from Georgia Tech related to D. Dallas. Here's the touchdown, which was done with ease. Again, it's made by Gross with the fake, takes it to the corner. Once he's coming to the corner, you got to come after him. He pitches outside to Hopkins, and Hopkins just walks in. Hopkins, three carries, 58 yards, and a touchdown. Great afternoon for the junior. I thought I heard, I thought I heard a thud on the point after, but maybe it was just a flat out miss to the right. I think the thud was from Dallas just there throwing his helmet on the ground. <laughs> Well, how about Hopkins? They say the coaches say he's the best blocker ever here at Georgia Southern. He's running pretty strong, too. Absolutely. 58 yards and a touchdown. Only three carries. Well, he averages almost 10 yards a rush on the season. Georgia Southern's championship team a year ago had one player drafted, and that was Ernest Thompson by Kansas City in the 11th round. He's on their injured reserve list. I like Hopkins' average today, almost 20 yards a carry. It's Taylor on the run back with a flag down, and he gets to the 20. 
maybe the 21. 2.17 left of the third quarter. Now the Giants have tacked on a field goal. Clipping on the receiving team during the run back. Penalty half the distance to the goal, first down. Back to the 10 and on the sidelines, Gatlin is still conversing with Chris Alton. I thought you set it up quite well in the first half about Chris Vargas, who has been alternating with Gatlin at quarterback. He has not played to this point. Well, Gatlin, to his defense, this quarter is five for seven, 75 yards. He's been fairly strong, of course, through that long pass to King that was almost a touchdown. They just couldn't get it in. Washington's in the game as a running back. Look out for the safety. His tackle at the one. Tackle by Alex Mash, another true freshman. Keith Washington with a loss of about five or six. See 99 there at the bottom of your screen. He is a freshman, but he's big. He's strong, 231 pounds. Almost had the sack. Washington just lunged outside and got out of the end zone. Watch this. Now, Washington usually is the wing tee short yardage guy. They try to spread the front. He's the short yardage goal line guy. They're carrying it down. You're just trying to bang it out. Second and 15 from the end zone. Ortega was turned around at the 20, incomplete. Whitley on the coverage. For number 83, Ross Ortega. Third down. And Georgia Southern hasn't had the pass so far, although one of the one of the passes was a long strike to Terrence Sorrell. See Chris Alt right there, the coach walking up and down the sidelines three times now. Chris Vargas has jumped right in front of him, just kind of got in his way, just to let him know he's there, he's ready. <laughs> Third and 15. That's not near a Wolfpack player. Pass intended for Taylor. Taylor was, I guess, the intended receiver. Now Ross Ortega will be punting from right on the back end of that end zone. Ryan O'Donnell will snap it back. Ortega's had a couple close to being blocked today. He has not had one all season, however. Good snap. You see the low boot out to the 29. Oglesby on the run back. Submarine at the 20 with a flag down. Nine-yard punt return. Right on the field. Mm, well, that's a, a clip that will take him away from the 20, right on the brink of going up by at least three scores and make it a little more difficult. It's a break for Nevada, obviously, because it'll move him back a little bit. But I mean, you've got one return guy back there. Got one return guy back here, and you kick a low liner and get it right to him. Here's 49, just hits him right in the back right there. Moves the ball back to the 35. Ronald Ladies Johnson. The answer, and please not throwing so the football the rests at the 35. Thank you for your cooperation. Sorrell to the right. Belser to the left. Eford is the fullback. Gross takes it out of Eford's belly and loses three as he keeps it. Drehos tackles him for a loss. A minute to go in the third quarter. 20 to 6, Georgia Southern. Second down. Along with Tim Brand and John Dockery, I'm Jim Nance from Paulson Stadium, Statesboro, Georgia. Here's the pitch to Ross. Makes his 360 move and Scoots out of bounds at the 33. Neil Holbert 
And Amantia get up, shaking their heads, the left tackle and the outside linebacker, because it looked as if they had Gross. They had him in his grasp. They were ready to take him down, and he just dropped it off to the pitch man. They're saying, what else do we have to do? A whole 77 and 55 right there. They both had him. And he just pitched it away and got a positive gain out of it. We'll call it third and eight. And now he's warming up. Chris Vargas. Quarterback from Nevada. That was a loss, but a face mask on contact. Incidental at best. Trejos had made the play two plays earlier against Gross. Oh, yeah, but see, watch this. He makes an outstanding play. Watch, comes in, closes the quarterback. See big number 60 right there? That's Drejos. Now he reaches out, touches his face mask, lets it go immediately. Looks up and says, hey, wait a minute. I didn't do it. Puts his hands up. You know he got caught in there. It's just incidental, five yards. Well, they're marking it off 15. That's a bad call. Bad call. Personal foul, they called. That's a bad call. Brings the football all the way to the 22. And a first down for Georgia Southern. Joe Ross. On what might be the final play of the third quarter. Hand off to Joe Ross. Tackle by number 43, Dave Norman. Well, in this quarter, only... Second down from the 17. We only saw one score, a touchdown by Georgia Southern. Darrell Hopkins, point after was missed. Now the, the recent hero for Nevada will get his chance in the final stanza. Georgia Southern with a 14-point lead after three quarters. We welcome you to the final quarter of action. Playing for the ring. Determining who's best in Division I AA. Here's the pitch. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Touchdown, Darrell Hopkins. 17-yard touchdown run by Darrell Hopkins. second touchdown the extra point is good this time a 21 point lead Georgia Southern scoring on the first play of the final quarter long day for Amantia and Drejos the outside contain guys Gross has been like a magician you've got to remember now back to that face mask penalty on Drejos made a great play instead he gets called for the face mask gives them a first down a new life and this is how they capitalize Darrell Hopkins just runs it in after the late pitch Nice dive to cross the plane. They were telling me this week that he has tendonitis in both knees, 22-year-old with 35-year-old knees, but he's sure running without problems today. Well, they said the Eagles have great speed when they hit the perimeter. They're as dangerous as you can find. Four carries, 76 yards, and two touchdowns. Junior from Bishop, Georgia. Both touchdowns in the second half, breaking this game open. I think Georgia Southern down the road would like to move up a notch. They dominated Division I AA. They might move up to Division I-A. kick retrieved by Taylor at the 13. And Taylor who has run both a punt and a kick back for touchdowns this year has not been able to really find any running room so far. By Brad well Vargas is ready but Gatlin stays in. See, Vargas has his helmet on now he's got his mouthpiece in his hand. Gatlin stays in at quarterback.
Gatlin, long pass on a line as well, but over everyone's head. Let's go down to John Dockery. Doc? You know, Jim, there is a mysterious, mythical body of water near uh, the Georgia Southern practice field. It's called Beautiful Eagle Creek, whose magical waters reflect the unconquerable spirit of Georgia Southern. You know, earlier in the year, when the creek was running dry, the team was one and three. They brought in some water, the rains came, the team then won 10 straight. And to me, this is a vivid example of the power of suggestion, calling this creek beautiful, guys. <laughs> well, they got a new quarterback in, Doc. Here's a guy that uh, they believe has magic on the other side of the team field. And Vargas hands off to Ray Whalen. Tackled by Darius Dawson. Vargas, a freshman from Woodland, California. And here is one reason why they call him super sub against Idaho. Led him back to victory in overtime. That was regular season action. The next two, Furman and Boise State, were in the playoffs. Now, in high school, he was a leading passer in Northern California. Very talented quarterback, very rarely makes bad decisions. As you mentioned, he's shown a lot of poise in the playoffs. Third and seven. Watch him pass here. Oh, right in the hands of his receiver, Joe King. Boy, that was a first down, too. Joe King took a stab at that like Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> I tell you, Nevada players better gather around and have a little talk with themselves, get mentally into this thing, or they might as well just pack up and go home now. Flag down as one man rushing was just knocked down illegally. And Oglesby returns it to the 35. It'll be holding against Keith Washington for Nevada. Well, for Georgia Southern, it's Today is the fifth trip to the title game. Holding called against Nevada. Only lost one time in the finals. Going for championship Holding number four. 10 yard penalty replay, fourth down. Make them punt it again. This time the back up the line of scrimmage to the 16. Field goal for the Bills playing without Jim Kelly. They only have one back for the punt. Why kick it at him? Kick it away from him. Well, how about kicking it over? Back them up to the 44. And Oglesby is knocked down at the 49. Another flag down. They ran into the kicker again. This time, I believe it was Sean Austin. Well, he did roll up into him. I don't think there's any question about it. Uh, that was, uh, he did roll right into Ortega. That's the second time we've seen a running into the kicker in this game. Personal foul, roughing the kicker against the defensive team. Down. Well, let me correct that. This, instead of running into the kicker like we had in the first half, is roughing the kicker. That's another interpretation like the face mask call before. Was it flagrant or not? And this time, the 15 yards gives him the first down. I had to think that was just a mere running into the kicker, not roughing. But it's a first down, and Vargas comes back onto the field. Good catch by Taylor, making some moves to get free. And down at the 46. Gain of 15. Pass complete to Taylor. Taylor came back for the pass. 
his national rankings all impressive. They had the team banquet, the end of the season banquet already at Nevada. And for the second straight year, Tremel Taylor was a unanimous selection by his teammates as the team's MVP. That was in the area of Joe King. Well, in Taylor's freshman year, he was a part-time player in the title game, the championship game. And now he comes back and he's big time. Over 1,200 all-purpose yards, you mentioned that. How about Vargas, though? You mentioned what he's done productivity-wise, showing a lot of poise in the playoffs, came in in all three overtime games with Nevada trailing. He's been compared to Eric Beavers, who led the pack in the early 80s and holds most of the Nevada passing records. Second and 10. Over the top to Williamson. Picks up the first down yardage at the 43 of Georgia Southern. Surprised Nevada hadn't gone to the tight end more. Of course, Williamson usually only comes in in the two tight end system, one back formation. That's the first pass today to a tight end. Trailing by three touchdowns in the hurry up mode. They need magic from Vargas. That time he just flat out overthrew King, who was all alone on the sidelines. Vargas is 5'11", 170, and we asked some of the coaches, how would you best describe him? And he said he, he makes Ty Detmer look big. <laughs> well, he's played every down of all seven overtime periods. He's the guy they said they like to bring off the bus last because he doesn't scare anybody. <laughs> he's two for five right now. Got him on the move. Eric Smith on the short pass and drives for the first down at the 30. Pass complete to Eric Smith. Tackle by See, Mark Nevada's got to start thinking about that clock right now. 12:39 left in the ball game. They've got two timeouts left. Flag on the field. Flag down, Tim. That'll bring back the first down play. Illegal motion called against the Wolfpack. Illegal motion on the offense, five-yard penalty, replay, second down. But my point, Jim, is you need three scores to win, three touchdowns to win. So you've got to start right, maximizing your clock right now. You've got to slow that thing down somehow. Second down. Second and 15. Taylor in a slot to the right. With the rush on him, Vargas sidesteps it and overthrows everyone. Matthew King was the receiver, but back deep, Mutimer and Whitley. I understand it was pressure. That's always takes some of your looks away. You don't have time to look around, but Scott Benning, the tight end, number 84, was wide open. They ought to start using that tight end. Now it's third and 15 with 12 minutes, 14 seconds left in this game. Intercepted, Darius Dawson. All season long, they say, Darius Dawson has come up with the big plays, and the true freshman from Moultrie, Georgia, steps right in front of this one. He's the linebacker, just went back to his hook zone. Vargas never looked off his receiver, looked right at him and threw it right out there. All you have to do is just read his eyes right now, skate to the football, and then go to it. Pick it off at its highest point. You got the pick, you got the INT, and the football with a 27-6 lead and 12-04 remaining in the game. John Vaughn of Michigan was second. Mike Mayweather of Army was third. Raymond Gross picks up three. I'm impressed by the way he, he runs the option. He, he carries that football very dangerously at times, but 25 carries, 121 yards, and a touchdown. 
Well, he runs it with such confidence. There's no question he's got the skills to run it. He also reads extremely well. If you watch him work with the fullback, when he either gives it to the fullback or fakes it, he's never looking at him, but he's reading the defensive line at all times. Second and eight. Maybe a yard, maybe a yard is all. Raymond Kelly out for the season, Sims out for the game. Big news in that one, huh? I'm telling you. Wonder what the Dolphins are thinking. Gross launches it high and deep and out of the end zone. Did you see Dio ship? Ship came in and just as Gross was releasing the football, I mean just tagged him. Watch this. Gross is, wa or Gross is watching the receiver. Here comes Ship now. Bang! Just put him down on his back. Dio deed it up. He brought everybody on Harvin. And his punt is out of bounds. At the 14, maybe the 15. He deed it up, huh? Guess you could call Gross a shipwreck. Got to be after that hit. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. Allen E. Paulson Stadium, where the Eagles of Georgia Southern lead Nevada 27 to 6. Now, I wanted to show you something that happened earlier to Nevada. They use a cannon. It's called the Fremont Cannon, built in the early 1800s. They fire it before the game. Early this year, there was a little confusion, and they fired it early, and they actually fired it into the back of huh. Steve Bryant. And this is his jersey, number 42. Now, Bryant was OK, but you see the numbers were melted, and the jersey was shredded. And this, guys, gives new meaning to the phrase, give me your best shot. Oh, Doc. <laughs> hey, they say Brian's still wearing some of that stuff in his back, still has some of it. Mm. That could have been extremely harmful, but much beyond what it was. And you know what else? They kicked off. He made the tackle on the opening mm. kick. First down, Vargas. Again to the tight end, Williamson, his second catch of the game. Out to the 26, 10-12 left in the game. Jumping high in the air was Taylor. Pass intended for Romero Taylor. Had he not got a hand on it, that ball would have been intercepted. I have a feeling Vargas will lead him to a touchdown before this game is over. I can tell you agree. <laughs> <laughs> By my silence? <laughs> In other words, I didn't disagree. That's right. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Second and ten. There's another tight end catch. That's exactly right, and they can hit that all afternoon. They haven't been doing it. Scott Benning, his first reception of the game, a gain of 12. I mean, it's much easier for us to see the receivers come clear up here in the press box than it is for Vargas down on the field. But even his last interception that he threw before that uh, last possession, the tight end was wide open on that one. 9.45 left. And Gatlin's in at quarterback. Throws it over to Washington in a gain of about three. Now, Chris Alt told us about this alternating. Yeah, but Gatlin's hurt now. He's a little bit shaken up, injured his leg, so now Vargas will come right back in. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask your cooperation to Curtis Gordon, the nose guard for Georgia Southern, hobbles off. Giff Smith comes out as well. Jack Harris comes in. Pat Parr comes back into the ball game. Here's Curtis Gordon, a former walk-on. Second, we'll call it eight. Good catch by Whalen, but no gain. As good as the catch was, the tackle was even better by Shane Maxwell. Well, you talk about a guy not giving away outside leverage, forcing a runner to go into a certain direction, and then just making the stick. Outstanding play by 44 Maxwell. Ronald Johnson was putting heat on Vargas. He's a rush specialist for the Eagles. 
Probably see him here on third and nine. There's a catch by Taylor. Taylor out of bounds at the 32. Pass complete, number 11. Run out by Whitley, but it's a very smart play by Taylor to get out. They've got to stop that clock with 829 left. They still need three touchdowns to win. And you say that's a miraculous finish. There's no question it would take a miracle, but at least they're still playing smart football. Breaks in behind the linebackers, makes the catch, and immediately goes to the sidelines to stop the clock. First and 10 from the 32 of the Eagles. Ortega to the left. Taylor in a slot to the left. Joe King is to the right. Looking for Taylor. Almost intercepted. Rodney Oglesby. Intended for Taylor. Broken up in the end zone by Rodney Oglesby. You told me earlier, Tim, that Oglesby is kind of quiet. The teammates call him Mouse because of his silence. Started the year with a fumble recovery and a run back of 97 yards for a touchdown against Valdosta State. Well, we told you he holds the uh, school career record for interceptions. As a freshman, he got two interceptions against Florida State. Picked him off against Chip Ferguson. Second down, 10. 8.21 on the clock. And it's Gatlin back in at quarterback. He's got trips to the left. Back to Whalen he goes. Oh, what a tackle. On his back, Michael Berry. Guy, you said may be the all-time best once he's finished here. Talent-wise, he's got it. There's no question about it. Watch this play. Here's 56, takes on the blocker, releases him, is on the ground, rolls over and makes the stop. The only problem is they said it sometimes he just gets goofy mentally. Vargas back in the quarterback on third and 10. He's dropped back now 20 yards, and that's probably a wise incompletion. Keith Washington couldn't hold on to it. He would have been tackled for about a 10-yard loss. Facing fourth and 10. Sh Shariar Pordanish. Look at Pordonis. He gets a pretty good block, just kind of pulls him from behind. Anything you can do to stop Give Smith. I'm out, Nevada. And then Smith comes anyway and just puts the little push on him, little shove. Now the Eagles are soaring indeed. Beautiful picture, isn't it? And with a three touchdown lead, only a half quarter left in this game. The scoring started in the first quarter. First drive of the game, Ross on a 14-yard run. Then a field goal by McKelvey. Another touchdown by Georgia Southern. Raymond Gross kept it. Then a field goal by McKelvey right before the half. 14-6 was the scored intermission. Southern scored on a touchdown, missed the extra point. Then Hopkins with his second touchdown, an 18-yard run and dive. And that's where we are, 27-6. Nevada faces fourth and 10 from the 33 of Georgia Southern. Vargas is the quarterback. Slot formation to the right. Sideline route. Caught by Ortega on the rebound. What a great catch. Pass complete to Ross Ortega. Gain of 15, get the first. Even if they don't win the ball game, he'll remember this catch a lifetime. Just because he goes for the pick, watch this. First down at the Georgia Southern, 18. Great concentration and just pulls it in. Rodney Oglesby almost had the pick, but Ortega was able to pick it up off the bounce. First down from the 17. Taylor across the middle. Taylor inside the 10. And a first down at the five. Pass complete to Taylor. Gain of 13. It's Michael like that old Houston, Houston screen where they take the wide receiver, they drift him across the middle, and they hit him underneath. And he takes it in from there. And he's by that time, he's going against the pursuit, against the grain. That's the same kind of play that Notre Dame scored a touchdown against Miami in the fourth quarter. A little dump goal. off to Rodney Culver. Very, very similar. A little bit different wrinkle to Carver. Of course, that was the play that Lou Holtz designed on a napkin at breakfast that morning before the Miami game. First and goal for Nevada. Coming around with it 
is Smith. And stacked up at the two. And off to Eric Smith. Under seven minutes to play now. They've got to hurry up. They've got to punch this thing. They can't play around inside the five like they did the last time. In and out of the huddle. Get them up. Keith Washington is the single back. Second and goal from the three. He's usually the guy they go to in short yardage. Throwing for it. And Taylor incomplete. And then almost intercepted by Dawson. He's only a freshman, but he knows where the cameras are. <laughs> He's made some plays, hasn't he? Yeah, and this ball was right there. Vargas puts it right where he should. Taylor should have had the ball. It actually came in to him too quickly, and it hit his chest plate and bounced off. Watch Vargas, though. So come on, guys. Let's make these catches. Put the ball right there between the one and the one. Should have been a touchdown. Third and goal from the three. There's the touchdown, Ortega. Ortega now with 10 catches, 82 yards. Another outstanding day for him. That's 35 catches in the last three games. Six minutes, 22 seconds remaining. And McKelvey on the point after. Makes it. 27-13. Comes back, looks to his left, locks on Ortega right away, waits until he clears coverage, and Ortega goes up to make the catch his 10th of the day. Nevada gets its first touchdown of the game, a touchdown pass from Vargas to Ross Ortega. A little more than six minutes remaining. Remember, the Wolfpack has only one timeout left. They've already burned two here in the second half. Now, Nevada's been kicking off to the deep left, trying to squeeze the return into the hash mark. Let Harker and Amati and Robinson and Bryant and those guys run under it. But you've got to believe they've got to try some onside or, or pooch it. You've got to go with the onside now. You've got to get it back with 622. <laughs> McKelvey keep, kicks it away. To Miller at the five. And to the 27. And with that option attack ground game, Georgia Southern will be able to burn at least a couple of minutes off the clock, you have to figure. Well, that's why I don't understand why you kick it to the deep back on a play like that. Again, they try to squeeze it into that left hash mark and close down on him. But they kicked it right to him, and they haven't been able to stop the option all day. They said coming in defensively, they had to stop Joe Ross, the fullback, and quarterback Raymond Gross. Well, they were exactly right. The key is stopping the quarterback, but they haven't been able to do it. Fake to Ross in the line, and Gross has it. Dives at the 48. Now you tell me why you kick the football to him and give it right back to a guy Raymond like Gross. To the 47. 19 yards on that, he now has 140 yards for the day. six minutes and a first down for Southern. Gains about a yard, tackle by Drehos. Lester Eford is the fullback, second down and eight. They give it to Eford. Clafton makes the tackle along with Chris Wells. Lester Eford, the ball carrier. Now under five minutes. Here's where you must make the play if you're in Nevada. Back by number 61, Chris Wells. Blue! Go, Jordan Southern! Let's go, Eagle! 
Burgess Southern, 440 away from another great Christmas gift, would, would be their fourth national championship. And Third and six. Their 50th win in this stadium. How impressive is that? Look at Eford bulldoze his way for the first down. First down. Like Don Nottingham, great compliment to Ross. He's only 5'8", but he's 235 pounds. You're the linebacker. Look at this. Here he comes. The kick out block, the squeeze inside, breaks one tackle, boom, spins off another, comes and then just punishes the next tackler. Got to like that. Unless you're tackling him. First down run. Gross has it. Gain of about two, maybe three. Raymond Gross, the ball carrier. 355 left in the game. Top teams in football since 1985. Well, the NFL, of course, the 49ers. Miami Hurricanes, Division 1A. And Georgia Southern, Division 1 AA. About to have four championships since 85. It's amazing that the program just began under Irk Russell in 1982. Got to give Tim Stowers all the credit in the world, though, for Coming in a high pressure situation, replacing a legend down this way. Gross just falls on it. It'll set up third and six. Replacing a legend Gross, is tough enough. But then losing three straight at the beginning of the year and being one and three, that's really tough to do. Sit your players down, turn them around, keep them mentally honed in. Players the said they the thought they were good enough. They knew they could do it. To the they told the coaches, they said, hey, coach, we come back and win 10 straight. We're shaving your head. I'd like to be a, in the locker room for that. <laughs> they want all the coaches to shave their head if they win today. Third and six. There's another run for the first down. Hey, Daryl Hopkins. That could be the best hit of the day. See the guys in trying to shave the head and the wives coming up trying to defend their husbands. You know, they don't <laughs> right. want those heads shaving. Daryl Hopkins got a bounce at the 25. Hopkins, again, it's the late pitch. Suckers everybody inside. Haven't been able to stop it all afternoon. First down. Big day for Hopkins, five carries, 86 yards, two touchdowns. First down from the 28. Just running the clock. Lester Eford, gain of about three. Lester Eford with the 25. Tackle by number 30, Kevin Sims. Chris Alt. He is Nevada football, been the coach for 15 years. Five previous times he took the Wolfpack all the way to the semifinals. This is the first time he'd ever got him to the championship game. It's a young team. We'll be surprised if they're right back here next year. Rose falls at the 24. It'll be third and six. Raymond Grove, the 24. I thoroughly enjoyed our breakfast yesterday with Chris Ault. He is nothing but class. He was a student, athlete, coach, administrator, everything. 15 years as head coach, 126 wins at Nevada. He has yet to win that first title, though. Fine gentleman, outstanding coach, excellent administrator. He'll be back, you're right. His team has only one timeout remaining so that's why they have not been stopping it third and six incomplete Terrence Sorrell trapped it Boy, if he had it completed that that would have been magic you know that pass was supposed to be the little shuffle pass inside he saw that it was covered pulled it back and then just went to a secondary receiver Sorrell was downfield blocking Saw that the quarterback, Gross, was in trouble, tried to turn around, and they almost completed it. Mike Dallas will attempt a 41-yard field goal. Dallas is the cousin. Tim mentioned it earlier, of D. Dallas, former Air Force quarterback. 41-yard boot. That's good. Exclamation point. 41-yard field goal by Mike Dallas is good. For Georgia Southern 30. To 
13. Coming up next, the NFL Today with the last word before kickoff. You know, the option's such a dangerous play. Even if you have an outstanding defense and you can stop it, the option's going to get positive yardage, you believe. Nevada's seen the option only three times in 14 games. UNLV runs it. Northeast Louisiana and Furman. But the Big Sky, they think that run is a dirty word. They like to throw, and Nevada's had a tough time with it all day. 146 yards for Raymond Gross, the quarterback. Two minutes remaining at the Meadowlands with the Bills clinging to that 17-13 lead. Here, just a minute, six seconds left. Come in to Taylor at the four. It made the tackle. Well, quarterback Raymond Gross with 31 rushing attempts. That ties the NCAA Division I AA championship game record. Gross national product right there. Jim, while they sort out what's actually taking place, you mentioned, of course, that they had played Florida State. They want to play Georgia down the road and get that kind of rivalry going here. And Georgia Southern has pretty much dominated Division I AA. To move into Division I-A, which is one of their goals, obviously, as you mentioned early in the telecast, they would have to expand their stadium to 35,000, have to average 17,000. And that is part of their plan for the future. Right down in the end zone, the Morris and Ann Lupton building right down here. They've got plans and a design for that building of the stadium, the enlargement of this stadium right here. Penalty on the return backs up Reno to the 11-yard line. And then incompletion stops the clock with 53 seconds left. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain at the field. Tim Stowers, the youngest coach in Division 1A football, or Division 1 football, that includes Division 1A and Division 1 AA. 32-year-old graduate of Auburn. Started out as an assistant under Pat Dye at his alma mater. He will become the first coach in one double A history to win a national championship in his first year. It's only been done twice at the 1A level. Vinny Oosterbahn of Michigan in 1948 and Dennis Erickson of Miami last year. Boy, who would have thought it in early October? One and three, they come back and take it all the way. It's over. It's, it's not. Just time had expired. Of course. It's the same goal post that came down in a hurry last year. Down in the student section. How about that freshman? Big old 99, Alex Mash. Freshman from Thomasville, Georgia, gets a touchdown in the title game. Boy, most defensive ends don't get a touchdown in a lifetime. He gets one as a freshman.
Just read it all the way. Look at the eyes, watch the head, the shoulders drift the same way the quarterback is, make the pick. Oh, they're having some fun in Statesboro now. Oh, mercy. Look at the look at the goalposts. Hey, those babies aren't cheap either. Looks like it ran into Hurricane Hugo. How about that story? They played a game the day of Hugo right on this field. Extra points blocked doesn't matter. George Toma, the NFL ground crew from Kansas City, came out and said this is one of the greatest fields he's ever seen. Playing in a hurricane, the wind wasn't great, the rain was hard, but it all drained. They played right through Hugo. Of course, this Georgia Southern team's been like Hugo ever since. Powerful. Nobody's been able to stop it. Mark Drejos got a hand on the uh, extra point attempt. 36-13 with 44 seconds remaining. have lined the field on the far end. Terry Harvin still warming up his punts. I don't know what he did. <laughs> He's been the four-year punter here. He doesn't want the, the career to come to a close. Well, with all of the uh, over-enthusiasm, they backed up Georgia Southern, penalizing them. The kick from the 20. College football at its best right here. True amateurism. It is fantastic. Taylor on the run back from the 24. Not able to really run any return back. 18 tackles for Clafton today. Alex Mash scored the touchdown a moment ago. Now he comes in and tried to get a sack on Vargas, who released it just in time. Well, the, the picture at this level, Southern, Southern, Northeast Louisiana, Furman, Georgia Southern, Georgia Southern. They will try to three-peat in 91. Oh, what a hit. Jack Harris. Here comes the other goal post now. Ladies and gentlemen, please get off the field. They count down the last five seconds as they stream on. Let's get down to Doc. Thank you, Jim Nance. Coach, 32 years old, your first year on national championship. Can you describe the feeling? Well, this football team kind of dug itself a hole that showed a lot of character coming back and winning 11 straight football games. I believe 52 football teams have come to our house and gotten beat. And number 50 just went home empty. We've only lost two here at Paulson Stadium. Glenbride Field that means really something special to you.